I'm in Verbier at the top of the Col de la Croix de Coeur. You can see behind me, oh, spectacular. And I'm here because yesterday I competed in the Tour de Station Ultra Fondo, 242 kilometers with 8,900 meters of elevation. And amongst the, uh, well, 650 lunatics taking part was myself and a chap called Alberto Contador. Now, uh, I won't spoil the result, but um, there is videos coming very soon to GCN and GCN Tech. There's a video about all the bikes and equipment and the, and the tech that I used. So stay tuned for those. And uh, just a little teaser for you, only 33 people finished. Coming up this week, we have fancy new cycling trousers, SRAM gravel tech. Also, we've got some new updates to Zwift, remote activated braking too. Plus, we'll be discussing if humans really are breaking all the world records, or if it's really all down to the tech and equipment. Uh, on to this week's, well, last week's poll. We've got the results here. Um, thought it'd be nice to do a bit of the tech show here. It's so nice, isn't it? Right, so last week we asked you, what do you think of the Law One 3D printed carbon shoes? Love them, super cool shoes, or not for me, they look like Crocs. And um, overwhelmingly, 89% of you said, not for me, they look like Crocs. They have it, case closed. On to our main talking point, because we want to discuss world records. Cycling is one of the few sports where tech really does have a massive impact on the performance and time an athlete can put down in their event. And quite often, it can be the difference between winning and not even getting a medal. And I think track cycling and time trials in particular really highlight this. So let's take an example, the 100 meter sprint, running. I mean, this is a short event and the only equipment you actually need are clothes and running shoes. You could do it without those as well if you wanted to. The men's 100 meter time has fallen from 10.25 in 1980 to 9.8 in 2012. And since then the winners have gone very marginally slower. The women's time has fallen from 11.06 in 1980 to 10.61 in 2020. And if we put those times into percentages, the men's time has fallen by 4.4% over 22 years, whereas the women's time has fallen by 4.07%. All in a sport that is very marginally affected by the tech. Now then, if we look at the men's team pursuit by comparison, in 1980, the winning time was 4.15.70. And now that time has uh, improved to 3.42.032, which was the Italian team pursuit squad, which took that emphatic gold medal at the Tokyo Games. Now, in terms of an improvement in time, in terms of percentage, that's actually 13.12% faster over three times the improvement compared to the 100 meter sprint time. Now, does that mean that the Team Pursuit athletes have improved their performance, improved their fitness three times as much as those running sprinters? No, no it doesn't. But what it does clarify is the fact that tech and equipment is really helping in these events, in these track and TT events, and vastly improving people's times. Tech has helped track and field athletes too. There's been plenty of stories circulating about how the track in Tokyo is actually one or 2% faster than previous tracks, all down to the rubberized surface of the track and how it's been designed differently. There's also been improvements in technology in running shoes, which has helped to improve people's times. But to explain more about the physiology improvements, it's time to throw back to Ollie and Sunny Verbier. That's absolutely spot on, Connor. And while nutrition and training has improved and helped people get faster, the vast majority of performance increase has come from advancements in tech. And as humans, we like to think that we're evolving and getting genetically you know, better and faster and stronger. But the fact is, evolution doesn't happen that quickly. It takes thousands and millions of years. So we are genetically identical to the humans that were taking part in and were around at the time of the first modern Olympic Games. However, there is still, you know, the potential, the opportunity for genetic outliers to emerge. People who are born with incredible genes who could just blow records out the water. I have read a review previously in which it identified 30 uh, gene expressions associated with athletic performance, although that was dated from 2009, so it's likely that there's even more now. 
but the odds of having all 30 of these genes in the optimum configuration was very, very, very slim. It was one in 21 quintillion, which means that human has never existed and is unlikely to never exist. That's, well, 21 quintillion is a bigger number than there are grains of sand on planet Earth. It's outrageous. But there is still the opportunity for a human being to be born with several of these gene expressions that helps them be a better athlete. And then they could potentially be, you know, someone who is just a once in a lifetime talent who can become the greatest of all time within their sport. A genetic freak, if you will, an Eddie Merckx. Anyway, back to, uh, back to Bath. Thanks, Ollie. So, what we're saying then is if a sport that is minimally impacted by technology can improve by 4.4%, then that's all down to human physiology. <sighs> oh, you're about quick, mate. All right. Oh, well, just those, those new running shoes, they really are pretty, they're pretty quick. Anyway, um, if we look at the improvements, like we were saying on the, on the team pursuit, as being you know, around sort of 13 and a bit percent, we can break that down, Connor into sort of eight and a half percent coming from improvements in tech and around four point, well, 4.4, four and a half percent coming from improvements from the human side. And that itself is going to be improved thanks to improved knowledge of sports science, better training, better nutrition, better tactics now as well. But what it does suggest is that, you know, more than double the performance benefit comes from the equipment rather than human physiology. Okay. Wow. Well, that is a lot of numbers and information to take in, and I am sorry about that, but I think it's clear to say that the key factor in improving these world records all comes down to the tech and equipment. It does. And if, if we take the sort of, well, what, what that would translate in the team pursuits if they were using the same equipment as what they used you know, previously, then in Tokyo, the winning time would have been just with a 4.4% improvement in physiology, not the tech, would have been four minutes, four and a half seconds, roughly, which is slower than the slowest qualifying time in this year's Olympics. That's, in that's incredible, actually, yeah. really. I think the question, though, remains, is how much faster can we go? Where, yes. where the limits lie? That is a good question. It I is. Like it. And also, can Ollie be Alberto Contador in the Tour de Stachon's Ultra Grand Fondo Everest in? So Get voting in the poll below. Time now for hot tech, starting with some hot new gravel tech from SRAM, Zip, and RockShox. They've launched their new Explore range, which is short for Explore. And, uh, well, there's some rather exciting products here. Yeah, let's start with a big one. So RockShox have entered the party. The suspension uh, brand has been around since 1989. And so far, have only really dipped their toe in the road market. Maybe making that fork in Paru Bay in the early 90s. Oh, I remember it well. Yeah. yeah, but now they've entered the gravel market in a big way. Yeah, so they've got the Rudy fork. It's specifically designed for gravel and has been designed you know, from the ground up just for this purpose. It's not like a repurposed mountain bike fork. It's either available in 30 or 40 mils of travel. It has a lockout and custom tuned spring rates. Uh, I get it, ideal for gravel. And it has custom mud guards that can go on it as well. And what about the Reverb, a suspension dropper seat post? Wirelessly activated via SRAM's Axis protocol. When fully extended, it operates like a standard seat post, standard solid seat post. But once you drop it, even just a fraction, it actually has an element of suspension, um, which is tunable via an air spring. Yeah, I'm a massive fan of the idea of dropper posts on gravel bikes. And, well, wireless dropper posts, that's just a dream, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh. Doesn't end there, though, right? There's also some new wheels from Zip called the 101 Explores, right? And apparently they're said to offer better traction and better comfort thanks to you know, really wide rims, which are able to pivot around the spokes. I'm really intrigued to see. And there's a new derailleur and cassette from SRAM as well. Yeah, which fills the 1044 gap in uh, 12 speed. Previously, you've had to put an Eagle rear mech on with a 1050 cassette, but now you can keep it in the drop bar family. Well, best thing about this, right? Apparently, we've got a bike on the way. It's in the post somewhere, kitted out with all these goodies. Oh, so you, get, you may expect a video to drop on the channel soon with more information. Next up, we've got some trousers, hot trouser tech 
right? They're, they're performance chinos for mm. cycling from a brand called Bulletproof. And they're designed to be waterproof and breathable and ideal for commuting in all weather. Yeah, and if you roll the bottom up a turn or two, there's reflective piping and there's even a warning triangle in the pocket. Not the coolest looking thing, but safety is the name of the game, isn't it, Ollie? Safety first. And mm. they've thought about the sizing as well because, mm. you know, proper like hench sprinter cyclists yeah. like myself yeah, and me. Connor, yeah, yeah. Say, like, just like muscles. Massive quads, so you yeah. can input your thigh size thick, thick on muscles. the trousers to customize to make sure they fit your massive hench. Robert yeah. Forsterman quads. I mean, there's a, there's a skinny option as well. Yeah, you can put normal. We wouldn't need that. Whatever normal is. We're hench. Swift have updated their rules for official esports events. Yeah, there's been a raft of changes, but the biggest one is to the list of permitted smart trainers you're allowed to use. Yeah, so only smart trainers or smart bikes with an accuracy in terms of power readings of between plus or minus 2% are allowed to be used in official eSport races. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to some, but it may affect a few people because there are plenty of smart trainers out there with an accuracy of 2.5 or 3% plus or minus in terms of power readings, which would render them illegal. Yes, and, it, and, as, and as much as we'd like to say that it's the UCI that's banned more stuff. It's not. It's not, it's no. nothing to do with them. So it's not something to worry about if you are, you know, casually riding on um, virtual platforms. But you know, if you are going to be riding in the top end esports Zwift races, like the professional ones, something to bear in mind. Then yeah, that's that's where you're going to need it. But for most races, you'll be fine. Some hot kids bike tech now, right? You're going to love this, Connor. It's called the Safe Stop Cycle, and it's a remote control activated brake that you can put on your kid's bike so that, you know, you'll appreciate this as a dad. If Jesse is just, you know, getting a bit confident and he starts careering down a, a hill at breakneck speed, you can just press this remote control and slam the brakes on his bike to stop him in his tracks. Oh, there we go. And I've heard it's actually got a 75 foot radius too. Yeah, so if he goes out of 75 foot range of where you are, slams on the brakes automatically as well. Oh, that, that is, that's good, that's my favorite aspect of this because then you know you've only got a 75 foot radius of where damage can happen. You just limit <laughs> your radius <laughs> to anyone that can sue you. So yeah. It's a cool like idea that. though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I also think we should apply this to Hank's bike. Yeah, we should definitely mm, get one for Hank's like bike. Like having a bulldog on a leash. Yeah. And finally, in hot tech this week, we've got a new park tool. tool. This is the quick bit change driver set. It's got a T handle and then a little compartment with all different different heads in it. And this kind of tool is really useful for when you're working on different parts of your bike that have Allen head bolts or they have Torx bolts, or even if you need like a Phillips head screwdriver. And especially useful I find when you're traveling and you're having to build bikes and disassemble bikes to get them in you know, bike boxes and bags. And the nice thing is that it's got this quick release magnet thing on it. So it's very easy to pull out the different heads and swap them. Mm -hmm. There was, there was, there's a problem that needs to be solved. Park tool, create yeah. a tool. I imagine Alex would also say that is pretty cool. I mean, he loves tools. Yeah. <laughs> Cha ching Time now for screw riding upgrades. Buy upgrades where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bike's equipment or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCM water bottle or bead on if you're French, pretentious, and as a commenter pointed out recently, Polish as well, apparently Poles call them bead-ons. I always called them bead-ons because all you're my managers okay. called them bead-ons. No, okay. they wouldn't yeah, like, if you said a bottle, okay. they wouldn't know what you're talking uh, about. I think, yeah, you're pretentious. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, Alex is on holiday this week and he actually tried to sneakily include his own upgrade in. Sounds about right. So I've removed that. Yeah, good job. Can't be that. Some kind of jet bike thing. But stay tuned, there'll be a video on that on the channel soon. It's actually about jet bike. Anyway, uh, first up this week, we have got Bill Jank42, uh, who's found a decent huffy frame that needed some love. Um, and he's. Right. He, he found it at the town dump. Really? Yeah. And he stripped it, rattle canned it, um, and added some details from the local bookstore. And then he's put new tires and grips on it. And look at it, it looks incredible. Yeah, I love this. I, I rate this. These, this is potentially my favorite type of bike in the whole world. I rented a few of these in Costa Rica, going up and down the coast. 
He best, says it's best thing it's ever. Proper cool though, isn't it? Yeah, I need to get. He says it's like the perfect mm. bike now for just cruising on down exactly. to the pub. Yeah, cruising. It's the best cruising. Oh, we bike don't. Ever. Although we don't condone drinking and cycling. No, highly illegal in many no. countries. Non-alcoholic beers. I love them. Yes. Great. Love it. But it's not going to be plain sailing. Who's he up against? Well, he is up against Arik56. Um, Arik56 found this neglected late 80s giant RS940 for free at a yard sale. We love free bikes in a yard sale. Mm. Um, in the Hills Bubbles University, he realised the lugged steel frame would be a perfect size for his girlfriend. All the components surprisingly still worked after a bit of cleaning, so it became their summer project to restore and repaint it on a budget, and it was great teaching his girlfriend more about bikes. Lucky in the girl. process, so yeah, brilliant. I love the fact you've done this together and kind of embraced and um, doing your bike up and teaching your girlfriend the pros about how to work on your bike and get the mechanics going. Um, brilliant. I yeah. am a little bit concerned about that picture of the frame though, with the sort of hair that's it, encroaching into the side. It's like, it's, I do hope that's not a severed head on the table. We, we can only hope. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Both, both fantastic upgrades, and um, yeah, may the best upgrade win. Mm. You can decide who, who gets the water bottle the by um, voting in the, the link down below to the poll. Energy Shen app. Good luck for your bidding. Uh, time now for the bike vault, but I've actually decided that I prefer it in Verbier, so I'm going to go back. Oh, all right. See you in a bit. Yeah. We're on for Sam. So, for those of you who are unfamiliar, the uh, the bike vault is uh, where you submit pictures of your bikes and then we judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, then we normally ring the bell. I don't have a bell here and I couldn't find a cow because they have them, but I couldn't find one. Uh, you can submit your pictures of your bikes by using the GCN uploader and also vote on all the bikes featured if you think they're nice or super nice. So without further ado, let's get involved. We've got this first one from uh, Gary G and he submitted his 3T Strada next to the Sydney Opera House. That is nice, isn't it? Valves sort of aligned. I mean, it's, it's quite difficult to see in this beautiful sunshine I'm bathing in. I'm gonna have to turn up the brightness. Yeah, super nice for that one, nice. Uh, next we've got Ben Myers, who submitted his Cervelo R-Series. Oh, is it? that's very nice. With the SRAM, SRAM on there, SRAM Force on there. Oh. Lined up his tyres, his valves, oh, very good. I think that's uh, no bottles on there as well. No bottle cages though. Don't know how you drink, but it's a super nice bike. Next one we've got is Yichui Anlian. I'm sure that's how you pronounce it. And he's uh, submitted his Trek Madone. Beautiful depth of field in that photo. Great shot. Front wheel, slightly wonky, but I'll forgive you. Although you, you crank angle, no, and Slightly blurry at the, on your saddle. I think what you've done, you've cheated the depth of field. You've used the little little hack on Instagram where it like blurs bits of the image, but it's not proper. You haven't properly adjusted the aperture. Um, it's blurred out your saddle. Poor photography skills, and you're you're not in Biggie Smalls. You, you're in you, yeah rubbish. Um, nice. Uh, next one is from Pluck Michaud, who submitted his. Norco Search XR Steel. Bit of a gravel bike going on here. We've got a one by drivetrain. Not, not, in, uh, not in Biggie Smalls. That grates me a little bit, if I'm being honest. Also, the other thing that's great, I, I do like your little sort of birdhouse you've got behind the bike, but you've cropped the image terribly. You've, you've, you've chopped off part of the back wheel, which... Um, to know it's just setting off all sorts of OCD alarms. Just a nice, I'm afraid. And uh, lastly this week, we've got Ale underscore X91, who has got his Byrain Merida Reacto 600. And also someone else's bike as well, weirdly in shot. It's two for the price of one. Um, it's a really nice bike, but there's just too much going. There's too much gubbins attached to it. You, you know, you're not doing it justice. You need to remove your spoky dokies and your, your your appendages and your lights and your saddlebags and your sandwiches and, and make the wheel straight. And then, who knows, might have been a super nice. Very nice bike, need to present it. 
in an appropriate fashion. Right, that's it for this week's tech show. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel.